and welcome back to Fashion Attack. And if you're new, welcome to the channel. What we're doing today is the Vanity Dilly Dally. It's a, such a masterpiece in design and it has been requested over and over and over. I just couldn't figure out how to make it in a cheap way. And today I got it covered. I got you guys. We are starting immediately. Every time we create this design pieces, the biggest challenge is not actually making them, is doing math. Like, so much math. So. so here it is. And I suppose this is enough for you, right? You can go and do it? No? I have to show you? Okay, let's start. We're going to create all the structure based on wood and a little bit of cardboard to make the curb areas because we don't know how to fold wood. Equipment. So get a thread, tie it on a marker, and then measure how long you want your radius to be, tie it on a little nail so you can mark it, and decide the place where to implant it on the wood without going out of the line when you're making the circle, and finally go and stab it inside the wood. Yes, you use a hammer, but why using the right thing if you can use the wrong one? I feel something so right, doing the wrong thing. Ah, right, the tutorial. Make a lot of circles. You're gonna do three of them that are 63 centimeters wide and then you're gonna make one circle of 52 centimeters and two more of 59 don't worry guys I'm gonna make your drawing with all the right amounts of measurements and circles because it's easier so you go and tie your thread tighter and shorter on your marker and there you have a circle of 52 now we go and do two of them of 59 and this is the example I initially drew it for you as I did for myself but I understood that nobody would understand that sketch and did it again separately you make three of 63 Inside of it, you're gonna make two of 59, you see, the full one of 59, and one full one of 52, this one on the bottom. Then you're gonna make other two circles that are 59 and 59, one of which is gonna stay full, and this other one inside is gonna have a 52 in the middle. Let's start with the easy part. You just get your jigsaw and start following as careful as you can all the outside of your circle. What, guys, you're distracted by these and you can't follow the tutorial? No, wait, I don't mean these. I mean this, yes. I scarred myself wearing those tapes that Kim Kardashian wears to be all sexy and stuff. Let's just say I don't recommend them. Back to the tutorial. You're gonna have to move your wood here and there, but here's the result, super easy. We're gonna do it for all the circles that we did, that again, we have five outsides with actually only four insides. And once you got all your pizzas ready, I'm gonna show you how to do the inside. Beautiful. Let's pass to the life hack. To cut in the inside, you obviously cannot fit your jigsaw. So the secret is to make a little bit of holes here and there following the line and then ta-da! You can put your blade inside and simply follow the same lines identically like you did the first time. It's actually so easy, you just need the trick to put your blade inside and you're done. Now that we have them all on the floor, you can maybe understand what I meant at the beginning with my drawing. You see all the outsides that were the 63 contain smaller circles. You can draw them all separately, but you're going to waste so much wood. So it was a lot easier to draw the outside and draw the second circle inside of it. My Audi here was completely gone and that's because I keep dropping my phone everywhere. But what I was saying is that I'm the queen of laziness and I don't send stuff because I have better stuff to do. But in this specific case, we do need to sand the two pieces because we need to connect these pieces one on top of the other one. And this space is not going to be enough once you put the fabric in between them. So sanding them is going to create some space in between them so that we connect them even once the fabric is inside of it. Take out your sander and you have to basically sand everything inside, outside, everywhere. And after that, while I was taking out my sander again, here's the proof of my phone falling for the 10th time today. I don't know how he's alive. Anyway, we keep going sanding also on the outside and everywhere so that we're sure that once we connect them, you see, there's two millimeter of space. And now that your t-shirt is completely covered in wood crumbs, it's time to layer up all our little pieces and make this 3D. I got uh, two very long sticks that are gonna be the depth, the height, and also the width of our seating area. Now we're gonna be the Make a mark every 35 centimeters. Consider that the height of a stool is usually like 40, 45, but we also have the height of the depth of the wood, and that's why we don't do the entire amount. Time to take out the most important ingredient of every single DIYer, and it's precision. Thing that I do not have at all. But we're gonna try. We're gonna have to make the first hole inside the little hole that we previously made with the nail. And then, on this little sticks on the top and on the bottom, so that we can use them to create the volume. 
connect the electricity. Okay, we connect the electricity and we are set to go. You make a hole on the top, a hole on the bottom of your stick, and also in the center of your two pizzas so that you can place your stick in between of them and create the height that we need for our sitting area. We're gonna screw them inside once you did the hole because otherwise you are gonna make the wood explode. Never screw without first making the hole. And then we are gonna go and create stability attaching a lot of wood all around our circles we're gonna go all around it and guys yes this was stable enough but if you don't feel secure just add a bigger one in the middle instead of a tiny one and it's gonna be super safe this could hold me i sat on it multiple times it works you don't trust me huh let's try it do 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 it holds let's go make the back whoops we're now gonna go and create the box hmm we're now gonna go and create the box around we're now gonna go i bought the sticks that are even thinner than the usual ones we're gonna have to put it on this one that is already skinny on itself and we're gonna cut it at 65 centimeters mark the lines cut them away i know you guys know the drill but if i could go back in time this section i would add more lines of wood the bottom seating area is a circle so it has stability but the top is going to be cut in half and it's going to lose a lot of stability so it would be better with more wood what i did here was reinserting the external circle of my pizza around my base so that i could go and draw where is the exact middle and where especially it connects to the wood top lines vertical lines because we're gonna have to screw the back lines of our back to the back lines of our sitting area to connect the two pieces together so that's what i'm doing right here i'm drawing where it is so that i can go seven centimeters and a half on the right seven centimeters and a half on the left and be exactly in the middle when i cut it away current situation we already created one and two adding the same exact thing on the top ones i'm gonna deconnect it there. You see, we've got the tiny one. I did the same thing with the outer part. And I went ahead and did it also with the makeup section, the little ones, on which I instead created lines of seven centimeters because we don't need a lot of volume. And this again is gonna go on the top part. We're basically there. This is coming so cool. We have now three structures, but only the middle section, as you can see in the original, is gonna have to be cut in, in half. Discuss your viewers with your sneezing and then go ahead and make the round section around the wood. The trick over here is to wrap the cardboard on itself on multiple times and then it's going to be so easy to go and wrap it around our wood. Uh, yes, I did use a hot glue gun but it takes time for it to dry so it's a lot easier if you also tape it so that it gives it the time to dry in the correct shape. At the end of all this I actually didn't even trust it enough and I even went in with a few staples and now we're gonna do the same thing also for the vertical but first we have to cut it exactly in the spots where we drew our lines. This is what we're doing. We cut the two lines in vertical on the top and on the bottom and then we go and cut a line exactly at the height of the pillow of our sitting area. So this is more or less what it's going to appear to you at the end. We're going to do the same exact thing also for this taller pieces, but because it's not a circle anymore, but just half circle, it was a bit harder to keep it stable. So here I was helping myself with staples and yes, I added them also on the sitting area. And this is more or less what happens at the end. You can see that it was taped and glued and even stuck down together with a staple gun. We're going to put it on the back of our sitting area and you see it fits perfect. Lee, it's like a throne. Oh, I'm so satisfied. I never thought I could pull this off. And now we're going to go and do the same thing also with this other piece. We are going to put this line down. Hold our fabric in half and start tapering it starting from the center. We are going to apply the cream color and the brown in a very different way because the cream, I wrapped it all the way to the back. I always made sure that I was pulling it as much as possible so to have it all nice and clean and pulled from the front. And then I stapled it on the back. This means that I do see from the opposite direction the color coming out. But with the brown, we will not want to do this. That's why it's different. Anyway, you go ahead, pull it, staple it, make it as tight as possible. And once you arrive to the corners, it's going to be a bit complicated because it has a different shape on the angles. On one side, the 
half circle is longer. On the bottom side, actually on the top side, the half circle is shorter. So you're gonna have to cut it out and then pull again the fabric all the way to the back and try to staple it as nicely as possible, keeping it all straight. So pretty! This came out so neat and we're gonna clean it out even better once we staple it to the back. Now, we're doing all the sitting area and the bottom, you're not gonna see it, and the top is instead gonna be covered with a pillow at the end. So even that kind of fabric that is extra, it doesn't matter, the staples don't matter, we're not gonna see all of this. So just take your time and wrap around the fabric around your bottom cylinder and try to create it as even as possible, leaving all the volume in the middle and not on the sides. And once you're done with all of it, guys, we connect it with the top. Look how pretty this actually came out. Now it's time to make it comfortable and add a pillow on top of this. And I'm gonna do it with a few leftovers from my old tutorial. And look what happens when you leave the foam in the sun. This was the same identical foam. This was in the sun, this was not. Let's position the last of all our circles on top of the foam. Yes, you could do it with one entire foam. You don't need two halves. And then you cut away your circles. So to make the pillow on which we are gonna sit on top of our sitting area, that's so logic. And we're gonna go also and smooth a little bit the edges because I wanted it to have more a cozy vibe instead of being too straight, it would be less comfortable. Also, we have this Chesterfield kind of thing in the middle of the pillow, so we're gonna have to make a hole. Put the fabric on top and yes, I should um, spray foam this to do it together, but I forgot to do it at home and I'm too lazy to go back, so we're just gonna... You're gonna pull a lot of fabric towards the inside and then go with your staple gun and staple the fabric to the bottom wood. Then you try to clean up the material as much as you can to make it even on every section and then you go again and staple it under the pillow, stapling it on the wood that is on the bottom. You're gonna cut out all the edges. Sorry guys, I'm snacking while I'm doing this. And that is gonna allow you to push inside the fabric so that at the end you do not see the staples anyway. You see, cut it out, clean it, pushing it inside and you're done. It connects magically, but we have to now put them together and be sure that they don't deattach. And this is where it comes, the moment that I was explaining before. We are going to screw the two pieces of wood of the top to the bottom and later also the two vertical lines. So go and make a hole in between the two pieces of wood. Then you're going to put your screw inside, screw it all tight to be sure that this is not moving anywhere. We're going to do this like three, four times around all the bottom. You can't do it on the top because there is no top. And after that, go with your fingers trying to understand where the line of wood is so that you can go and screw the wood in between the other vertical line of the wood. I hope that the images explain better than my words because I'm not doing a great job. But yeah, you see it, right? Now wait for your hot glue gun to be heated enough and go and stick all the fabric on the back of the chair. As I told you, the black part is going to be very different from the white. We do not want to overlap the white. We want it to arrive exactly to the corner. That's why we're not stapling it because we do not want to see the staples but only using the hot glue gun. You see, I arrived to the corner and then I'm going to cut it exactly on the same point where the cardboard ends without going and overlapping on the opposite direction. You see, the top is white and only the sides stay brown. Now let's do the makeup area. I just placed it on top because I needed something to keep it stable, but what I'm doing is connecting together the top piece of wood with the round of our makeup cabinet. Um, that's how we wanna call it. I do not know the right word, but anyway, you have to go and put a lot of nails all around the half circle that is the one that is detached from the chair. I could have totally finished the tutorial last night, but I decided that this part is not stable enough because of this one. We cut them very short here so we don't have the extra wood on this side. So I decided to go to the wood store this morning, buy extra wood, and we are gonna do two extra legs here before closing the back, try to hide them. This is actually my only regret on this tutorial. If I could go back, I would totally add way more lines of wood inside the cardboard before arriving to this, not two extra legs, a lot of extra legs, because this skinny part is, okay, remove the paper from your dog, because this section is actually very heavy. You're gonna have to put your makeup inside, we're gonna screw a cover lid on top, we're gonna put a mirror inside, it's heavy. Mirror time. Time to create the mechanism that is gonna allow you to open and close this section of your mirror. You get this bendy things, but it's important that you close it on the 
direction that when you open it, it stays stuck outside. Uh, otherwise, when you open the mirror, it's going to fall completely backwards. Once you obtain that, you're going to go and screw, make four holes where to screw your little screws inside, and then you go and screw them inside. Once you do this patiently with one, two, three, and four, we're also going to have to go and invent a little mechanism to allow this section, circle, drawer, I do not know the word, to open easily without forcing it with your hands. You see, it works, it stays up. But let's create the mechanism. Flip the circle upside down and get a little piece of uh, vegan leather that we bought to cover this and wrap it around itself so that we can make a sort of little handle on the opposite section to our metallic uh, mechanism, I would say. And then you staple it inside. You wanna see if it works? Are you ready? You just position it on top of the structure that we just made. And then, we're gonna have the mirror on the inside. One important note is that actually you do not have to put this exactly centered on top because look, if it's exactly in the middle, this is going to fall inside and it's not okay. So what we have to do is put our frame like two, three millimeters or even a bit more forward so that it gets stuck. The mirror doesn't fall inside anymore. And then we go and put so many screws inside. Take out your hot glue gun and we're finishing this baby. We do the same thing that we did on the chair, also on this other section. So we go and put our glue and we do not want it to overlap the white on the opposite direction. So we're gonna do it only on this part and then cut away all the extra pieces. Time to add your wheels. I'm gonna go and screw only one screw inside of this so that it stays um, movable. And even if you want to pull the chair not only back and forth, but also left and right, I will still be able to do this. So I put four wheels on the makeup section and I'm gonna go then and add after four wheels and set on the seating area. Now we have to go and cover our makeup thing and we have to make a little hole on the bottom. No, the hot glue gun was not hot yet so you need to entertain yourself for two three minutes till it gets hot and there you go you go and add all your glue on the top of the wood and then you go and open it make first a little hole to pass through the metallic little structure that we built before and then pull it on the opposite direction on the inside you don't need to use the hot glue gun it's enough to use ah first you pass inside your little handy thingy and then you can finally use your staple gun to close all this because it's going to be hidden by the mirror. So we don't need to use the hot glue gun, the staple that is way stronger and more resistant. It's going to be perfect. Once we close the entire section, ah yeah, first we add the wheels also to the sitting area. And then we go and take out our mirror. First attempt was to just put all the glue on top and then squash the mirror on top of it. But it didn't work. And here you see me doing the typical Italian sign. Non c'è trippa per gatti. There is no lard for cats. That means it's not gonna work. I do not think there's a translation for that, but the problem was that the fabric itself was creating so much volume that the mirror wasn't even touching the glue. So I added a second layer of glue on top of the glue that I already did so that it would be thicker. It touched the mirror and it worked. Before I show you, please let's stop and look at how beautiful this angle of my double chin is. Never let a bad angle take you down. You're way more worthy than that. We are at the last step of all. What we're doing now is get a little stripe of foam. Wrap it inside way more material than the length of your foam. And then once you have enough material, you're gonna have to fold the foam in half and then another time in half, another time in half, so that you have three perfect holes at the exact point where you need them. This ones are gonna be used to create, again, this Chesterfield effect on the sitting pillow. So we go and staple the fabric inside this holes. Then we're gonna wrap the extra material on the top and on the bottom of this pillow. And the chair is completely finished. 